Değerli konuklar, Sinopal'lerin son haftalarına girmiş bulunuyoruz ve yine çok değerli konuk sanatçılarımızla birlikteyiz. Johanna Reiner ve Johannes Hoffman'a hoş geldin diyorum. Avusturya Viyana'dan bize katılıyorlar. Bu haftaki konumuz yine Vivi Alexander ve Işın Önol'un alt metinleriyle birikenler içinde beklenmedik keşifler. Üçüncü şeyimiz, söyleşimiz ve onların konuklarıyla olarak davet ettik Johanna ve Johannes'i. Elbette ki bu dostlarımızla birlikte yine Sinop'ta güzel bir etkinlik gerçekleştirelim diye isterdik ama çünkü onlar 2008 yılından beri Sinop ve Sinop Ailen'de birçok etkinliğe dahil oldular. İlk buluşmamızda bir sanatçı inisiyatif olarak Golabor.at olarak onları tanıdık ve yıllar içinde birçok yararlı etkinlikte bir araya gelerek katılımcılık ve işbirlikleri bağlamında birlikte deneyimlerimizi geliştirdik. Ee, öğrendik, öğrettik ve tekrar öğrendik ve sonuçta da çok değerli e, çalışmalarla birlikte e, yaşamımıza devam ettik onlarla birlikte. Ve bu projeler sonunda çok güzel bir kitapta bir araya e, getirdiler e, değerli arkadaşlarımız. Ben onu da göstermek istiyorum. Belki kendileri sunumları sırasında gösterecektir ama burada hemen yer alıyor. Kolabor e, ve e, alan araştırması e, sanatın içerisinde. Başlığı bu. içinde de Sinopale'den birçok projeye yer vermişler. Bu vesileyle onlara teşekkür ediyorum. E, kuratörlerimiz e, Işın Önol ve Livia Aleksandra'ya e, sözü bırakmadan önce Sinopale 8 etkinliklerinin Haziran ayında her çarşamba akşamı sinopale8.org linkinden girip izleyebileceğinizi bir kez, bir kez daha hatırlatırım. Bundan sonra iki etkinliğimiz daha var ve 22 Haziran'da da kapanış etkinliğimizi gerçekleştireceğiz. Ve e, bugün için emeğe geçen herkese teşekkür ediyorum e, değerli dostlarıma. Şu anda ekran arkasında e, görmediğiniz birçok e, arkadaşımız e, çalışıyor ve bu linklerinin bize ulaştırılması için çaba gösteriyor. Çok değerli tercümanlarımız, e, tercümanlarımız da Çiğdem Girgiç e, aramızda. O da bugünü e, bizim için, e, diğer, sanatçılarımızın anlayabilmesi için diğer dilde e, çevirisini yapacak. Şimdi sözü kuratörlerimiz Işın Önol ve Livia Aleksandra e, bırakıyorum ve Johannes ve Hoffman ve Johanna Reiner'la birlikte onları e, söyleşileri için baş başa bırakıyorum. İyi akşamlar diliyorum. Thank you very much Milih. It's always wonderful to be presented by you. And uh, we are very excited uh, here today uh, to be with Johanna and Johannes. Uh, I had the chance to work with them for several times, but I think they are the uh, one of the perhaps only uh, more experienced uh, people in Sinopale comparing me. I started, um, I actually met you for the first time in Sinopale, I believe in 2010, but before that you were already there and your experience had started before that. And you were invited for multiple times to Sinop and you produced um, works in continuation, but always in different uh, manners as well. You know Sinop very well, you know the people of Sinop very well and the structure of Sinopale very well. And also Sinopale grew together with you, with all of us, it is, it is uh, finding its new forms. So um, we are very curious to hear from you, both your artistic experiences in Sinop, how you developed your projects, but also your personal experiences in this town. And, uh, and I think they are not separable when it comes to Sinop anyway, because your personal encounter with the town, your connections always inform the work. So in your case, uh, you came each time with more and more knowledge and information. That's why uh, I'm very excited for today's um, conversation. Um, Livia, I know you are in a noisy environment right now. I don't know uh, if you will be able to say a couple of things or would you like me just to continue with, uh, with the artists? I'll just quickly say hello. And unfortunately, I'm going to keep myself as muted as I can while the noise is on, and then I will pipe in as possible. But um, I look forward to this conversation and I'm sure that a lot of interesting things will come up. Thank you. So for the moment, I will speak on behalf of both of us. We've been having a lot of uh, conversations anyway. So hello, Johanna and Johannes. Let's start from maybe starting from your earliest experiences uh, up until today. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, we are also very happy to be with you to to come again 
to even if it's only virtual but also to come again to CNOP somehow because it was already very nice to go through all the pictures since it has been really a long time and many many opportunities that we have been to CNOP so um, the first time when we were in CNOP was 2008 um, we we came there and we had a a nice plan <laughs> before, but it turned out totally different. We will show you this in uh, in our slideshow. So we have a uh, um, we have pictures, and um, I just give you a brief overview of uh, the um, uh, projects that we made in Sinop and the uh, years. The second time was uh, in two thousand and eleven. Um, uh, it, it was a project called Birgündig Müse, Müse, Birgündig Müse, it's Turkish. <laughs> it, uh, it is supposed uh, to mean one day museum, which is also a project that we did on several locations, also in Austria and also in Belgrade and uh, in Serbia. In Serbia, yes. And then there was another um, time that we could return to Sinop. <laughs> I have eyebrows. You have Sorry. eyebrows. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, we returned uh, in 2014 for Tamilic, a project that we also will present later, and also returned in 2015 for Hall uh, Design Project. And so maybe it would be best to start the picture slideshow because it's really funny to look at it. And I will also, as we together, will talk mm -hmm. while watching the just pictures. Before you, just before you start, mm -hmm. for our audience to give a, a background information about why we are doing this. Uh, when we con started conceptualization, concept conceptualizing this part with uh, Livia and, and re-inviting you actually for this uh, portion of Sinopalia that is called the wondrous deposits of unfinished threads, we were particularly interested in, uh, and we invited four artistic position for this, we were particularly interested in uh, some of the works we witnessed um, that collected a lot of information while they were there, a huge research behind the work, but the artwork that comes out can only be visible only for a certain amount of time, but only a, a small portion of the information you gathered could be visible in the artistic form. And we were interested in inviting some artists that we knew that collected a lot of information and had amazing experience with people. That's why we wanted to revisit your memories and your archives to, to sort of dig in, to get those information from you to be added into our archives through this video format. I just wanted to give this background information for, for the audience to, to give the context of the conversation. So let's go to your slideshow. Okay. <clears throat> Wait. Here it is. Okay. You see it? Ah, okay. I'm sorry. No. Yeah. Okay. Do yeah. you see this? Yeah. Do you see good? Mm -hmm. Do yeah. you see the sea? The sea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. This is how it started because first of all we thought, okay, um going to a place near the sea is always good. That In was summer. <laughs> This, that was our first thought and the first intention to, to see the sea. And I know that you all know where Sinop is, but we didn't know. So we were very, very curious where we would be, where we would uh, end up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is an old photo. I, I collected so many photos you will see later in the, in the, in the slide that there are many, many photos inside, which I 
had the chance to to collect during um our stay yeah during our stay and during talking to people because mm -hmm. they gave they handed over to us um for example dvds full of pictures of the american ways of CNOP. and so I don't know, most of you know Sinop. I don't know if Livia also knows Sinop. It's a, uh, the city is located on a peninsula. You see that? But I think you will know already because you had many um, presentations already. Mm -hmm. So when we arrived to Sinop, there was this Diogenes, Diogen in the, uh, on the um, starting point of Sinop and these now are just some impressions of Sinop, the coffee, coffee place, the tea house near the, near the um, sea and a small coffee place at the hotel. Mm -hmm. And yeah, some places, sea view, old houses, what which are, are totally interesting. Buildings, so many buildings, <laughs> new buildings. There's a lot of craft going on there many many strange um building complexes where you were really wondering who is going to live in the, all of these flats and the places and food finally food was very good and yeah again the seaside and when we ca first came there we had we had the idea what we wanted to make we wanted to make a ship so we wanted to build a ship and we asked Meli beforehand if he could organize uh, a shipwreck as well, an old abandoned ship so that we could use it and uh, farm or um for the installation do something with it we we were not totally sure what to do with it but we wanted to find a shipwreck and when we were there, we were just strolling around and we we had, as we normally, we um, German Austrian people, we are used to, okay, before we give our, um, as we tell our needs, and then when we arrive, everything will be prepared and there will be a ship. But it wasn't the case. We just uh, started being there and we couldn't find a ship. There wasn't a ship to to get the all the ships were uh, either on repair or they used parts of the ships in this uh, shipyard. So <laughs> we created models of it and and tried to to find material, but everything we wanted to use was uh, really difficult because all the people they still. They used also dead boats to take the form out and then rebuild, uh, rebuild, yeah. rebuild them. So just, just sorry to dis uh, disturb you. Are yeah. you showing us several images, or are we still looking at the same sea image? Um, no, this is the same now. Okay, okay, because um, you know sometimes you. Yeah, yeah I went forward because this is what. Our idea was initially we wanted to make a ship wreck and then also to trace the traces of people touching it or working with it. That was the idea. So we wanted to to have colored hands and everyone who touched and worked with us, we wanted to to make it visible. That was the idea before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then but it turned out that so many things didn't work like we imagined, so we had to change our plan. And um, therefore, we, as Joe said, um, we we discovered that um, people in Sinop just are also are used to use everything. So there is no um, trash. There is no trash ship in the harbor. So we we were just we realized okay we can only also use things that we find and build another as a build rebuild a boat so we now here you see the people helping us to turn a ship around as a boat a original sinopian boat fisher boat, yeah. fisher boat and and we started to just cover it with um wood as a with um 
with leftover scrap pieces that uh, the the carpenters there let us take because this was really the they also used all the good parts for their boats so we only have the scrap left so we decided to make a puzzle to puzzle the whole thing together to get the form out. And it was re really the case that we then we started to stay also there and to work there like many other men who were boat um, repair men or boat builders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They also stayed there and we started to know each other and then we we had to ask for every piece we for every piece of of that here that you see we had to ask them can mm -hmm. i use this and they said no i need this for my boat or can i use this so it was really funny because we had a lot of contact and and we had to ask for every a single piece it was also. really interesting mm -hmm. so and this is also something that we re realized that nothing is thrown away it's just it's always important everything will be kept for later they will use it later so and then also people started to help us and yeah we were just staying there it was very hot <laughs> i remember <laughs> it was about more than 30 degrees and we stayed there and we just built up this boat and many people were helping us and who isn't this schrift into and structural, we it had to hold itself, so we had to build a structure that could be also taken off off of this boat, and also has to stay as a boat when you put it down. So it has to hold a little bit more than. These people started to give us advices how we should do it and how we should <laughs> um, make the segment of flucht. Uh, the, yeah. the water line or the, the yeah. keel line. Yeah, and then they also said to us, you know that this boat will never swim. <laughs> and yeah, we had really some funny <laughs> moments. Yeah. And I, wanna, I really have <laughs> yeah. yeah. I really the feel I really have the feeling you are showing us different images but yes so we are seeing only one what? image from the beginning really yes this is what i why i disturbed ah, you okay so we see only the okay. first key image that's it we did not see oh, oh i'm sorry that, oh i don't know why okay let's try to see the next one yeah but i wanted to make um full screen we can try again let's do full screen and try to see how it works <laughs> this is really no it works now yeah it works now but you see the the frame of pdf yeah. we do we do see the frame of pdf but it was always the case before we were always seeing that so let's see the next image now if we if we can go on we just go on like this i don't i don't try no, it's working exactly yeah. now it's working okay, where's he not do you know <laughs> let's start again it's it's work it means a lot okay this is the ocean and the small minibus when you mm -hmm. arrive to see not it looks like that and then you go to the harbor and have a cup of tea and then <laughs> Okay, and the sea, old buildings and new buildings. Interesting big areas. Big housing projects for holidays, holiday houses. Kitchen. Okay, I, I go a little bit quick through the pictures because you heard the text already. <laughs> You have to combine in your head. Yeah, that's the shipyard, this boat building area, where they restore mm -hmm. also old boats and build new boats also. Mm -hmm. That was the plan. We wanted to trace the, the people's hands, as well, people who helped us. We wanted to, to um, color their hands to trace 
their um, contributions. But yeah, we didn't really do it <laughs> like that. Then we could use this boat, so it was hard to find a boat to use. Uh, so we couldn't um, use an old boat because they said they would need every boat. So we we started to just borrow the boat, this boat we borrowed. It's a typical Sinopean um, rowing boat or fisherman boat. And Meili was always very proud of the Sinopean traditional boat. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, after yeah, after <laughs> after waiting for a long time to start with the project, suddenly many people rushed to us and helped to to turn the boat around started, and yeah. to get it started. It was also funny how things worked because you had to wait very very long, and then suddenly it works. Many people come and help you. And then they helped us building the boat. So this is where I told you that we had to ask for every stick, for every piece. We had to ask the other people on the place if we could use this um, material. And we started to, to just wrap it around or to just form it on, over the boat. And then people were discussing our work. <laughs> <laughs> and, and giving advices and also telling us that the boat will never swim. And then this is how it looked in the end. Um, when the boat underneath was removed, it stayed like this. It was a kind of skeleton. And then um, Meili or the people told us that there used to be a tradition where they were um, called he Helesa. Yes, Helesa. Yeah. Well, um, arrived once in Sinop and then they had nothing, they had no food and nothing. And then they took the boat and carried their boat through the city. And people started to throw money and goods and things inside their boat. And so every year there's this fest festival, Helesa, where they carry a boat around. Is it right? I hope I tell it right. And so we we took it, so we took this tradition and asked everyone to help us to carry the boat to the exhibition. From the harbor up to the uh, old children uh, prison. Where the first events took place. Yeah, it was quite heavy. I remember, yeah. but it was nice. It was with the big um, drums. Also, but here all the the people also we did it with the hands. Also the touching. So we had all blue hands, and we everyone who carried the boat left his hand on the boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and here is the opening ceremony. And here you can see the boat. And then we had a, a, a small trouble. I don't know if I can tell it, I, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you tell me to tell it because we had a trouble with the flag, with the Turkish flag. <laughs> And these were the nice guys who helped building it. It was a really nice experience for us to mm -hmm. work together with them and to share time with, with them. And OK, that was the first project. It was interesting because we realized that things are working totally different from what we are used to so and after a while at the beginning we it was a little bit complicated to to re, to, to um, get into it yeah and uh, but after a while i really started to enjoy it like that because it was uh, a very spontaneous way of working and not very big plans beforehand so and uh, but 
things worked out and but a funny way to <laughs> to work yeah i really enjoyed it and after realizing how it it functions it's it was as so I, I realized that it um, also um, provides good new um, potentials, also new potential. So Joanna, I think it would be really interesting to hear from you as someone who wasn't there, right? Mm -hmm. In hindsight, like how did people from Synop react to this kind of reappropriation of the boat, right? You were taking a boat that is used in this very kind of everyday life in very practical ways, but you made it into something completely different. And I think it will be really, it's very interesting for me to kind of like learn a little bit, like how did that translate in terms of people's interaction with what you did with that boat? Yeah. It it was it was more uh it, it's more the symbol of a boat it's not a it's not as you can see it will never mm -hmm. swim and it was not the intention to mm -hmm. to to make it swim or to produ produce a boat that will swim i think people reacted very positive but also very um curious at the beginning they were asking what are you doing there why are you doing this and so on but then after after we said it's just fun or it's just art or we do just add something that you do we just um we just work the same work that you do <laughs> but it doesn't make sense what we do so we just do it as a kind of a mirroring of what you do after after we had this conversation people were totally like also um, proud of their own yeah. work yeah. yeah yeah it was i think they they realized this kind of mirroring and and were felt um honored or something like that they were totally positive and one big thing was for me <laughs> so for us one problem was we always ask Meili and everyone, what are we going to do with the boat after the exhibition? Because we were really worrying about leaving it there. In and everyone, space, yeah. yeah, because we were used to, you cannot leave anything in public space because it's a insurance problem. And if someone hurts himself, it will be a big problem. So don't do that and you cannot do that. This is how things work in Austria. So we are really, we were so used to this thinking. And then we asked Meili and everyone, what is going to happen with the boat later? How should we um, be prepared or how should we prepare that someone uh, removes it later? And everyone told us, what are you worrying about? It will just fall apart and then someone will remove it. <laughs> Some Somebody will take it for heating purposes or yeah, collect for, it. <laughs> I don't know. Or reuse it for his boat or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this was also really a good and interesting experience for us that things can work so differently in different countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's also one big part of our work is that we are not producing sculpture or um, that we're not producing pieces that you can sell afterwards or you keep them or mm -hmm. so we don't make uh, like not yeah, art pieces that are sellable <laughs> let's say it like that i guess it was um, a good experience for you <laughs> yes <laughs> we learned a lot yeah yeah, and it was a um, yeah, it was a wonderful experience. Also, building building it in, in this harbor area and having all the people around and going for chai and all the nice um, the nice things around it, or 
having dinner all together in the evenings at the, the restaurants. Ich das Fleisch gespeichert, Scheiße. I'm sorry, I, I made a mistake, but doesn't matter. Well, that's the... Ich habe die, die Texte nicht abgespeichert. Ne, mach da nichts, muss mal so machen. Mm. Okay, sorry. Good. The, the second project was Bier Gündlich Müse in 2011 mm -hmm. in the old um, children prison in the yeah and um also this project uh, um also the idea for this project was developed during a meeting in 2000 11 in May with together with Mahir and other cultural workers who were there for a um, European Union funded project and we all together um, were brainstorming what uh, could we do so in Sinop to to um, um, to empower the, the civil society more um and um the the idea was to make a um a project called collecting the future where we had also uh, discussions urban discussions with the people and uh, also about uh, their living conditions and so on and then also we had the idea of um uh building a one day museum also not a one day museum, but a short time museum. And uh, the idea was to use the, the Raumstadt of Friedrich, Friedrich Kiesler is an architect, an Austrian architect who used to make very interesting um, exhibition structures. So we, we, we, we took, so we somehow took the idea of his structure and build it also build it in the museum because it was a, a a big advantage that we shouldn't um do anything as do any harm to the prison because it's a it's a protected building as you couldn't put a nail in the walls so we thought of a structure which we could build uh, um Without, only inside yeah. as only without which could stand alone mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it was very nice also because i had an accident before and then i came with two uh, uh wrapped up fingers and it was very nice because then we had also carpenters uh, helping us uh, with material and the building up of the of the mm -hmm. structure and it was so funny because you could also communicate with a just with the hands by showing mm. uh, this measurement this so it was uh, a very mm. very nice explaining uh, it easy. works it works out yeah so yeah you could also do it without the language mm -hmm. so you can communicate also with only with hands if mm -hmm. there was the need so and for this project, we went through the city and asked people to give their comp contributions to the to the museum. So we asked them if they would have in Sinop, if they would have a museum in Sinop, what would you like to to have there? Also, what would you like to see in the museum? And for example, this woman, she wrote a recipe, recipe, also recipe, recipe piece, yeah. for strudel or for <laughs> no no no these are we have these are what is the name of the strudel this famous no cool no cool no cool yes and or we went to boat to to a boat builder who built the small boats for tourists and and we collected all these things and also asked people to come to the place and to bring their things and then that was the model as well how it should look like and oh then 
the woman and yeah in the, on the first in the first moment people just um started to bring their garments and their treasures from their um from their home we have this from the elder people from pre yeah uh, grand grandparents and yeah they showed us their Georgian roots, as they brought their Georgian garments and textiles, and and um, and then this is how it looked like later. Also, there is this video you saw the video where we tried to to to um, document the the development of the the exhibition. <laughs> Where you said, Alexander, as Olivia, that you um, you got very curious how it would end, how the exhibition um, turned out then, and we also asked the people to write their context to their objects. So we didn't do that. So we asked them to do this. But what we did is that we um, we we thought of um, chapters as so we we we um, named three as so a four chapters for the exhibition because we thought it would be important to focus on some certain things because maybe we know that people maybe wouldn't really go to the point if we just leave it to them so we asked as so, or we suggested to to use certain chapters which were the economy of Sinop, the Sinop the former prison, because this uh, we thought this would be a very interesting. important and interesting point. And then one chapter was the American base on the hill, and one chapter was migration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, migration. Yeah. yeah. Because we all as so all of these four chapters we realized are really important in Sinop. For example, because the migration, many of the people used to live in Germany, came back when they uh, retired, or as well, parts of the family lived in Germany or Vienna or in Austria. So it's, it's a very um it's a very strong relationship already with with the as with other countries. So when we went through the city, we met people as we were just talking to ourselves and people said, oh, can, can I help you in German? <laughs> like, okay, uh, people understand us. They used to live in Vienna, so they know. And also the economy is a big, really important topic because since the, the military base closed uh, the, more, the the biggest um, economic um, engine of the city um, went away or yeah, left was, yeah. yeah yeah yeah yeah, for us it was also the, so interesting to hear all these stories from the people who uh, who we met there because we also searched for people who could tell us what happened in this prison, uh, what happened when the prison was closed and all these important details, uh, mm. also how the the, the government uh, shut the prison down and everything was burned, all the paper, um, the papers disappear. And we found the guy who uh, burned all the papers. Um, mm. And it is also written in the prison that is, there is nothing left to know and they are all, uh, nobody is telling you anything. That's why we wanted to research more on uh, also on the, to get in contact with the people who really were there. And then there were also three films or four, mm -hmm. four. films, uh, interviews. 
we made four films interviews with people who worked either in the American base, then the owner of the hotel opposite of uh, opposite of the prison, who were all the people visiting the prisoners, and some people who were in the prison. Mm -hmm. And it's also in an interesting mixture of the people who were imprisoned there and the local people who were also in prison for small crimes. Mm -hmm. So there were intellectuals also in, in the prison. Also from in, from, from whole or uh, the whole Turkey. Mm -hmm. And also the small thieves from the village. So there was a, a funny, um, yeah. But, I mean, to kind of like wrap together these two projects, I mean, it sounds to me that there's this really interesting thread that's running through these two projects and possibly also into your next two projects of the way that your work, first of all, you are working with communities like in the city, but also the way you're kind of harnessing local knowledge, but also local memories in your work. And um, it just, I'm, I'm really intrigued in terms of like how that, in terms of Sinop Pali's effort to kind of capture this work and um, look at it over time, Meli, I'm also thinking about you in terms of like looking at this work from the perspective of time, you know, that it becomes another source of, of information, of knowledge. And I'm wondering also how that fed, therefore, into your next two works mm -hmm. in Sinop. Yeah. Um... We were always... Um trying as so we were always working like as so as trial and error we were just uh, trying something and then realizing okay this works or it doesn't work and for example for this um we didn't know because you know in austria we have a big um we have a um big culture of um Dealing with the past because we are all trained and uh, and and so from from very child also from very young age on to to reflect on the on the history and on the past and we have uh, um, history lessons in school and we visit the memorial places and so on and so for us it was absolutely interesting that there is no culture of um dealing with the history in the sense of for example for the for the prison we were really wondering there is such a place like this prison which has a so present, interesting yeah. hi history of intellectual people or in, and also um political um political um fights and and and problems and also development so as also developments for a state or for for a community or a society also everything that we heard later is is such a big story it's such an interesting story and but there is no um culture of dealing with it so people talk a lot so we we realized in all of this um uh time that we were there the people love to talk but don't um really dig too deep in the in the topic and then i i i remember when we when it came to the point that we said we wanted to form one chapter about the prison i asked one friend of us as well, a turkish friend and i asked uh, do you think if you if we ask the people if they tell us um, the history of the prison or what they know, and then she said because I I wouldn't so I didn't know I couldn't um, um, I couldn't is that now? I, I I wasn't sure about it let's say and so I asked her and then she said if you ask the right questions. 
we will get a lot of answers. <laughs> and this is really also a very, <laughs> a very interesting um, moment. And then we really started. So she she went to the, the fish restaurant and she asked then <laughs> one of the waiters. She asked one of the waiters and he told her, yes, I, I used to be in the prison and I know a lot and I have friends and come in two hours, we can talk about it. And this is how we came to this uh, interview with um, this guy you saw in the video. So one was a teacher and the other one was one of the workers, I think. Mm -hmm. The Hansi place. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, by the way, uh, maybe I have a question. What, who took the exhibition down and how did it work with uh, giving back all the, the, the pieces from the people? Mm -hmm. We and Sinopale uh, team, the young volunteers, uh, gave uh, to, uh, the pieces uh, back objects back uh, to the uh, people and uh, we reconstruct all the wooden pieces uh, mm -hmm. For example, I was there, and uh, later we used uh, all the wood uh, wooden pieces uh, the, for the another exhibitions in Sinopale, for mm -hmm. Sinopale three and uh, Sinopale, I don't know, just uh, seven, and then we are we are continue to use it. Yeah, super. Mm -hmm. And as and we also you use uh, maybe you met uh, with the, some. Uh, how can I say some some pieces uh, from the Eintak uh, Museum in Hall uh, building in mm -hmm. the Tamirlik? Yeah, they went, I went some also in this in your bureau, I think. In the first. yeah, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Meanwhile, may, maybe I can also ask a question. So, th this piece you experienced over and over in different uh, cultural contexts, as sure. you mentioned. And, um, and of course, there are very different uh, approaches uh, to willingness to talk about on past. But, but as you mentioned, when you look at our grandfather's times, they are all very problematic. So I think um, history is just engraved with us and uh, depends on how much you would like to talk about. But all of us um, have different experiences and knowledge of uh, violence within our families, either as victims or perpetrators, etc. But the layers of experiences you collect. Um, so the museum altogether, uh, when you look from a cultural heritage approach and the aesthetics and the design, it looked really beautiful. And I was lucky enough to see a version of it in Vienna as well. Uh, so, but on the other hand, Deep down, it is full of very sad memories, very um, hidden memories as well. How was your experience in general of uh, building this museum and uh, based on your conversations of uh, people in different cultural contexts um, that made you continue making this project, basically? Yeah, we. We, we don't have the approach that this has to be the perfect museum or the, the truth. All, all the truths. Uh, we, that's only mm. the truth we could find in this in this short mm. time or about this topic and the questions we are interested in. And so that was, uh, and we also like to, it's not unserious, but it's, also, there has to be some some fun in it, or also to to have a, mm -hmm. have a good good feeling with it. Also, we don't don't want to touch really. Um, I think we also want to to deconstruct the the approach of having a truth because, and this this is something for, which is very important for us that we think you can tell whatever you want also i mean and and in this um approach there is also this uh, um uh, this empowerment moment of giving the people the possibility or the framework to to tell something and and we only try to help 
to bring it to more to a point or more to a moment where it's really interesting or re really touching something for them and also for us and, and for everyone. As a starter or as a starting point of uh, just starting to get things done so that we have a beginning or mm -hmm. also for someone else just to see it's so easy you can set up your own museum or you can set of your own car shop or whatever you want mm -hmm. just as an imagination of, of what yeah. can happen it's, it's a kind of a built vision as a vision that we want to show as we want to show you can do you can do it yeah it's easy you can make something and and this is what we always do in all our projects we we just try to make a kind of vision out of it as so it should be only uh the idea of something so that people see okay okay it's, it's easy you can do something you can just build a museum or, or you can just build a workshop or you can just do whatever <laughs> and yeah maybe we go on or yeah sure yeah okay so now I have the better as a real um, PDF because something happened before. I don't know what. <laughs> um, as as we mentioned before, we had these four exhibition chapters, and yeah, I we told already. Um, and, and we also try to, to, to group the objects. So we, we also try to put them in a, some kind of order so that it, it isn't just um, random. random. We, we wanted to have an interesting exhibition. So for sure, yeah. <laughs> um, wow, it's better, yeah. And then we included also these interviews, for example, this woman, you know, you saw the video, uh, this woman, she told us that her children lived in Vienna. And then we had something in common because I had my studio in the same district as she used to live. So we already um, found something which was very common between us. And I always like to also like kind of make relations or friends is too much but um to to have relations to people really as a and it's also the point how to it's interesting how to get the people involved in our project so it's always very much work is uh talking to people and drag them into our uh <laughs> into our uh thing. idea yeah, mm. our idea Mm -hmm. And so that the people are participating in, into the story and bringing their story into ours. Mm -hmm. That's an important. Thing. Yeah. Okay. These were the interviews. I I recommend to to again watch the video if you want to, and also come back with questions <laughs> to me if you want to and yeah here you can see different um of photos of the prison because it's really this is really disturbing for me for me always was this disturbing in Sinop that you enter the city and the first thing you see is this empty prison and it's so obvious that it's a place this is a, a place which cannot be there without any um, comment. So, yeah, or telling also the history. Yeah, it's just an empty place. I don't know if it's still like that because there has been plans to to turn it into a cultural center. Like yes, it's transforming, but, and then in October it will be uh, it will be open. Really. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything left from these traces of the building? Yes, uh, from the old uh, the buildings, uh, they left also most of them. Mm -hmm. uh, for the, for the, uh, the new buildings, it's, it's how can I say, uh, they uh, disappeared uh, now and there's no new buildings mm -hmm. uh, there, but the old buildings are still standing uh, in, the, in the prison uh, happiness area. 
Okay. And there is some cultural um, projects also in it involved, or, or, or are you involved in it, or? Could you could you repeat your uh, question? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand. Is there also a, a cultural background then implemented in the in the prison, or is it just as a museum, the prison? It is, it is, uh, it is uh, now, uh, under the reconstruction, okay? Mm -hmm. And the uh, functioning uh, will become uh, later. Okay, so they just build it as... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But is there a plan to, to include you or Sinopale into the, the cultural... Uh, we are giving uh, our, uh, how can you say, our tips and our devices, and uh, they are working on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is sites a management uh, group. Mm -hmm. um, then after uh, October or after December, it will be open, and then uh, it will become the cultural uh, program. We will see. Mm -hmm. We will see it, what's happening. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and then we come to our next. Um, then this was the change of the object because then mm -hmm. um, the prison was not what? in use anymore. Yeah. Ach so, yeah, na, we sind noch nicht weit. Noch nicht, okay. Ja. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, um, that was too fast. Yeah. Klo wanted to, to switch to high building. No. But yeah, okay. before that, I have to share some pictures which people gave me or gave us uh, um, of the military base. And, and you see that uh, the whole hill of the peninsula used to be a own city for American soldiers. So they had a cinema, so they used to have a cinema and they used to have a chapel and they used to have everything there. It was a whole city. And now it's a closed place. It's it's now a military place where you can't go as it's closed. But at that time in the 60s, people went as so went there. Many people worked there and also the, the American um, soldiers or the, the Americans invited the children to go to the cinema in on the hill. And the, the airport came from this time. It was called Yankee Airport. And then, and there I, I got a, a whole DVD of pictures from people, and I also found a lot of pictures in in internet, also in an internet search. <laughs> yeah, it's also that the the culture, uh, the American culture, also went into the city, and maybe that's also one part that we saw that the people were very open, open to, to strangers, open to, to holidays or to, to, to other people from other countries. So, or interested also in this exchange of mm -hmm. how, is it, how is it somewhere else, but yeah, mm -hmm. all the cultural things that mm -hmm. happen. And then uh, when I, Put these videos. Also, uh, before uh, we made the, the film out of it, also I put these videos only for itself. Also on in in Vimeo, and then I got some emails from American people. Thank you for sharing your scene of videos. I was with the U.S. Army stationed at Tuslock Detachment Four from 19. 84 to 1985, I loved Sinop and traveling throughout Turkey. I would dearly love to bring my entire family for a visit. Thank you again. It was so nice for me to get these messages from somewhere in the world. <laughs> it's really from totally people. nice. Yeah. Dear Miss Reina, I, I greatly enjoyed watching your interview on Vimeo with Miss Günsel Diri in Sinop, Turkey. You know, the woman who, who used to be the, I think, the office the manager last, the last sec yeah. Secretary of, yeah, yeah. in the mid 70s my work for the u.s army took me to the scene of military base several times where i had the pleasure of working uh, with Kunzel. over the years i have lost contact and would very much like to get in touch with her in the video she mentioned mentions using facebook but i don't have a facebook account if you can forward this message to her and give my email address 
<laughs> this was really so yeah, that, sweet. Yeah, many, many, uh, <laughs> many letters came in, mm -hmm. and, and we were really uh, proud to get these reactions of mm -hmm. of old army soldiers just sending emails. Yeah, to, I really to love to get to get reactions, and but in as I told Livia before when we talked before. We couldn't really follow up the the um, reactions, so this is something that we never really figured out from the Turkish people how they also what happened. I always wanted to to know more about it, but um, yeah, this is something where Meli maybe could talk also or tell us more, <laughs> but it doesn't matter now. <laughs> Yeah, that's that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now we switch and then to <laughs> the the prison was not the place anymore for the next um Sino Palace. Sino Palace. So then they got a new room which was how a whole building which was a former shop, not shopping center, but something like that, uh, like in an oval shape. A building where several um, small mm. shops were included, which were still working in there. Also, community services and plumbers and uh, sewing Shop. suit makers, mm -hmm. um, a fruit, fruits, and a coffee house and. Uh, I like the place very much because it has this this patio in the middle and all these balconies around and mm -hmm. so it has so many opportunities mm -hmm. and yeah and then we had <clears throat> we we had a <laughs> um, started to to love the repair culture as well. I told you before. <laughs> And then when we went through the city, we always saw these art pieces like this one. Uh, like someone made a fence out of I don't know what for one holy fig tree. <laughs> for this I really started to love these kind of installations on the on the just on the street or next to the street. And there were many examples for this um repair culture which i really think is so beautiful as a, i mean funny also <laughs> or for example this fence is also great it repaired several times with different materials and so on and and okay now to be serious i think uh, what we already start to lose in austria or started to lose already since some um also many years is the knowledge of how to do something or how to repair something on your own so and we realized that in turkey it's still very present so everyone knows how to repair something everyone does it on his on his own so it's it's very common and it's very visible Therefore, we had the idea of making a workshop, as well, um, um, creating a space where people could share their knowledge, or we could initiate that people should share their knowledge. And um, yeah, therefore, we took one of these small rooms in the Hall building, which yeah. Joe told you before, and we cleaned the room and, and, and we had. It out and we had the idea of um, uh, starting, so we did it like that, like we very often did it. We came and we knew, okay, we have one week or 10 days, I don't remember exactly, time to, to build it up. So we start on day, I don't know, three, and um, start with the empty room and then um, walk through the city, talk to the people, ask the, also visit all the shops, the, the, the repair shops, and... the crafts places, and ask people if they would help us to build this room. And, and we, we really, um, uh, 
<laughs> well, we forced uh, forced some of the we have really to force uh, some of the people to to come and take part in our program. So we we made a schedule of uh, schedule a schedule where you can uh, they signed in and they gave lectures about their crafts and showed other people yeah. how they could. Uh, repair things or build things or mm -hmm. uh, we had a knife maker we had several uh, mm -hmm. bike repairs we had many other people plumbers it was really an interesting um mm -hmm. interesting thing yeah so we visited them and asked them directly would you would you be so nice to come to the repair shop and to spend there three hours or two hours and uh, show other people how they could do it themselves and help them with their repair projects. And we had a full schedule. I don't know if the people really <laughs> showed up finally <laughs> because I, I, I always ask the Turkish friends do you think they will really show up later? And then they said, I don't know if they will even show up. <laughs> you never know this. Yeah. yeah. Because it was also <laughs> without money, so they did not get no. money for it. So it's also hard to mm -hmm. have a, a running business to be away. But there were always uh, guys coming and uh, mm -hmm. showing things or helping us with building things or bringing materials to the workshop or giving uh, at least uh, equipment for the workshop tools and, mm -hmm. and they just let it there and now it's an it's an open space where you can just go in and work or produce things that you or repair things that you have to do mm -hmm. i don't know how it's still there mainly do you it's still working as, as this. Yes, the hall is still uh, there, and uh, some of the uh, places, some of the rooms, using uh, from ourselves, and some of the um, uh, our, uh, rooms are uh, using from the another NGOs and also the uh, uh, tailors and the other uh, stuff. Uh, they are still standing. Uh, they are working uh, uh, there, and also uh, your uh, Tamir Lik is also in the same uh, place, it never mm -hmm. changed. And the design, uh, how can I say, design boutique is there. Uh -huh. Of course, uh, we are not successfully uh, to open it uh, once again, but it's there. Uh, what you did mm -hmm. uh, inside and uh, under the Create City pro pro program. And uh, the Hall building using, um, are using uh, from the uh, different uh, young uh, people and NGOs uh, under our uh, management. Mm -hmm. you, you got more space in there, so no, no, it's we have a nine uh, space uh, and in, the, in the, yes, uh, not the more space because everybody needs a space and they are focusing on our spaces to uh, to keep uh, them to uh, catch to steal uh, them. That for reason uh, we are we are mm -hmm. defending uh, now. <laughs> yeah. I I show you very quick. Do you see this video? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. You could see that they talked without speaking the same language. <laughs> and had a lot of fun without knowing 
what each of them was, was saying. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, okay, this, here you see the, the full schedule underneath Mehaba. <laughs> it was full. We, we, we also tried it. to learn the language, but it, it's, it's, it's still hard. There's not so much left. We have to come again to practice. Yes. <laughs> and then the last thing um, so far that we made was this HAL design shop. It was a social innovation and design lab together with, um, I don't know, uh, six, seven or eight designers from abroad coming to CNOP, working together with the same uh so with also six or seven or five or eight uh, designers from CNOP um producing new um new, new products together so inventing new products and yeah so we came there and there was a, a we had to separate in different uh, fields, so to say. We had graphics, we had interior design, we had product design, we had so many things, all the things you need if you mm -hmm. wanted to set up a shop. And there have to be prints to make and... and, mm -hmm. and it was also within one week or eight days. And yeah, and I started to focus on the plants and the plant culture of things. <laughs> again the garden culture and um i started to to make together with neil and Bünger. yeah uh we and a woman i don't remember her name uh we we started we wanted to to create a hiking trail and also to dig out some plants which uh we could um sell in the shop and um yeah we went there and then we also i organized a uh, um plant uh, and plant and seed sharing event and i visited women at home and um visited their gardens and then i visited the museum and had a look at the wonderful pots of sinop as well of the antique um treasures of Sinop and mainly found or, or organized a woman where I could um, build pots my own on my own um, out of the typical Sinopian clay. I found out that they have there is a special <laughs> there's a special clay from Sinop. So mainly it was so nice to organize this possibility to to create real pots out of Sinopian clay. And then I also worked together with a um, sculptor in the high building and he helped me to to Gießen? to pour, to pour uh, a pot out of um, concrete, as so a colored concrete and uh, in the shape of a bottle. <laughs> I tried, I tried many things. Bottles. Yeah, I tried many different things to to produce new pots. And Joe, meanwhile, and other people as well, the designers, and also Joe. Joe made the um, shop interior yeah. design, and I collected the, the plants, and other people um, created bracelets and. Um, there was also clothing and clothing prints and, and, and bags and really wonderful, nice um, products for this wonderful shop. And so, I don't know how do you did it <laughs> within two days or whatever, you created this great shop design. Yeah, it was where, incredible. Yeah. But also the other things like these bags out of the typical hand-woven um, textiles of women, also traditional hand-woven textiles. And yeah, it was such a wonderful project, I think, because it was so 
um, inspiring for everyone, also for all of us and for, for Sinopian people and for us too, also for everyone who was there and had the opportunity to, to, to take some uh, starting point together with a designer and to develop something new together as a, like a very um, hip, cool <laughs> product out of it. Like, okay, traditional jam and then with this fancy um, labels on it, it really looked great. Yeah, there was also <laughs> outside we had a, a... This is the shop. Yeah, this is the shop. Great. So this, the shop still exists like that, you said. Also, this is really nice. It was also lamp design and, and we had yeah. the mayor there for the opening. Mm -hmm. That was the opening. And then also Maria um, made a portrait of every designer, which she, she hang in, in the uh, courtyard so that people could also read who these people are who created all of these creative things. And also there was uh, one guy who just made the visibility in the city yeah. also for Hall, so that Hall is better seen from the outside or that you can walk away to find Hall when you mm -hmm. come from the main road. So there was some kind of tracking mm -hmm. people yeah. made for the Hall. That was the team. And of course, the the workshop was also good to work with <laughs> because there were some tools left still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we could also use the Tamilic shop for, for building things or packing or working on the products. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we reached the end. <laughs> so we are looking forward. <laughs> I'm really sad, but we visit. reached the end. Yeah, so many nice memories. So yeah. the two shops, the Tamirik and the Hal Dikyan, are still open, you said, right? Yes. Yeah. Tamirik is uh, open since the uh, since uh, the seven years because uh, during the uh, different uh, biennials, you know, parties and different artists using uh, that. For example, Neil used uh, for. Uh, uh, her own uh, project for the uh, beekeeping uh, project. Um, uh, we changed, we transformed as a printmaking studio, for example. Ah. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. And uh, the another artist used also for the, uh, the for the another, uh, how can I say, action. But of course, uh, the uh, equipment, uh, it's hanging uh, on the on the wall, <laughs> what the Johannes uh, they hanged uh, at the beginning. And in the uh, design shop, uh, it's yeah, every every piece is still standing there. And then later we made also another uh, the second part of the uh, design uh, project. And the new uh, designs uh, the uh, came, a new products uh, the uh, how can I say, produced, and we put it uh, the everything uh, inside. And you can see the uh, the combination from the first and then second uh, the design uh, uh, the projects and the products in the design shop. Great. I mean, both both works are, I mean, also including the uh, one day museum work is a great understanding of what is going on there and then uh, facilitating um, sort of bringing your tools and becoming functional for both the city and the biennial, which I actually admired a lot, how, how not only to do the work you like, but also making your work become useful and serve for the for the biennial purposes and for other artists. Um, a, a work by um, Mahir Namur in one of the editions where, um, and, and in collaboration with I think a couple of people where they were producing, where they were um, making us cook and uh, to, while talking about our histories, but meanwhile, the product, what we cook would become dinner for the others. These, these kind of uh, approaches are um, coming from a, a true understanding of what is needed there and what is, uh, how, can, how all of a sudden a work can be, uh, can function by itself, but can also serve to the others in a very, um, 
humble way, uh, which which I truly admired. And I think in each uh, participation, you created a way to to do that. Um, so this is not a question. I'm just. Um, uh, it was an opportunity for me to express that, uh, and and always in a very um, in a very soft and hum in an approach that has humor, like it's serious enough, but also always some sort of um, touch that makes you smile at the at, at what you are seeing. Mm -hmm. So these were all very um, present in every single work. I I think. So we have very little audience here, but there may be some questions. Uh, uh, I want to add something uh, because uh, the, for, for the Eintracht uh, Museum, the one day uh, museum, mm -hmm. uh, it uh, reminds uh, me uh, uh, for the concept of the uh, Museo Arte Utile. And because uh, the, I didn't know uh, for them, and then uh, since uh, five years I'm, I'm dealing with the Museo Arte Utile concept, but uh, the, my friends uh, did uh, this kind of uh, the useful uh, museums uh, project, uh, one of them. In Sinop, it was in 2011. It was the first time uh, I uh, saw uh, how can you build, uh, the, uh, construct a museum uh, concept in one day. It's mm -hmm. a good idea. And then later, uh, they, I met with the Arte Utile uh, concept, uh, the idea and the, the, uh, the knowledge. And uh, the uh, I remembered uh, now it's it's related with this kind of uh, things uh, your project. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, that work was um, produced in the framework of collecting the future symposium, where the Sinopians were invited to think about, like collectively imagine what um, how to build a museum if there was any chance for the future of the city. I think it was a very um, uh, to the point um, commentary where, where actually every single person visited their own archives and histories and, and um, collaborated. So it was not only by itself, but also the way it contributed to that symposium. I think it was very, um, it was very important because um, um, instead of only imagining what it would be like, it was it allowed us to also have a have an example, have a version of it, uh, have a presence of of the things we were speaking. Mm -hmm. Livia, how is it out there? Is it still noisy? No, it's quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, I'm not sure um, if I had more to add at this point. I think I, again, for me, it's been just such a wonderful experience learning um, about the, your work. And I was also thinking about the way that it, it continues. It's the gift that continues to give, right? Because the workshop continues to be there, that these new designers are now working in the city. Um, and I really look forward to seeing what else um, the future brings in terms of your work in Sinop. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be great. <laughs> also, at this stage, uh, you mean, I, I was there for the first time in 2010, and you were uh, slightly earlier, and you met with a lot of children. For example, we had a ch workshop when I came to uh, Collecting the Future, and you put some of the results of the workshop with children into that museum too. Yeah. So those children are now grown-ups, and they are actually um, now taking all the responsibility of the biennial. They are yeah. adults, they are... <laughs> Pardon? Yeah. The seed is planted. <laughs> right? And, yeah, uh, and right. they're also, uh, on the one hand, they are the ones who decided to uh, construct, like they, they came up with this um, subject of um, the, the, the concept of the up upcycling, but also revisiting and constructing the archive. I mean, Mm -hmm. There were a lot, uh, of course, missing in the archive. Making the biennial is already a huge work and a lot of voluntary work. And then after each biennial, recollecting all the material and creating the archives, 
it was of course uh, an incredible amount of work and now um, the young people who are running Sinopale are running that you know work to to construct the archive uh, create the new uh, the conceptual framework etc so um so we are also witnessing that sort of change so it is not simply going and touching the city and coming back and uh, restarting but this continuity and how um i think this is the the main reason why i feel so connected to sinopalia because it shows that it is actually possible to mm -hmm. to have such a uh, such a force that is based on voluntary um, uh, work is can be sustainable, can grow. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to, you know, mm -hmm. just just uh, sort of um, lose itself. The enthusiasm is still there. That's why I'm uh, curious a little bit to hear. There is, um, uh, I see Chatai, I see Gulsha, uh, <laughs> and Iklim I see among the... Um, uh, so maybe they do have some questions too. If you do, please <laughs> turn on your cameras and join us. <laughs> maybe they left. <laughs> <laughs> Possible. <laughs> the, the, the, the, the. Young generation. <laughs> are you the Iklim I think that you are? <laughs> Yes, come on. <laughs> Iklim is a friend of Vienna, which uh, worked with me in another project in Vienna. Uh -huh. But she's also a Turkish um, Hello. woman. Hello. Um, Can you hear me now? Okay. okay. <laughs> so Hi. nice to hear you. <laughs> so nice to hear you too. <laughs> Do you have a question? <laughs> Not that we want to force you, but <laughs> <laughs> no. But I mean, I was really happy to see this because I think most of them, Johanna already told me um, during our work together. But I haven't seen them in so many pictures, so it was very nice also to hear everything in details. And I, I, I really like all these projects. So, mm. but question-wise. No, or I think the questions I wanted to ask, like in which situation the places are now, is also mm -hmm. answered. <laughs> so I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I I want to say um, also to you, also to the to the curators and the organizers of Sinopale, that I really many many times think when i go to another place to a village to somewhere where we do projects we do a lot of projects also um with my professional work and I, very very often i think this is such a great idea to do it like that to to just um open up to to possibilities and not to to curate too much or to direct too much uh, to just um, give a possibility to like a playground where a people can develop, can be uh, um, creative and and young people can um, connect with them and whatever comes out of it I think it's really great to leave this open because it makes a a big, big, big um, potential and freedom also to to do whatever you want with it. So you are not um, forced to do anything or forced to to have a result out of it. So I think this is so special for me. Also, I think it's it's such a great thing, the Sinopale. <laughs> thank <laughs> Truly. you, yeah. dear Sinopale. <laughs> thank you, thank you uh, to you, my, my yeah. dear friends. And I have also in my hand uh, the, your book. Uh, it is also very important because in this book, it's approximately 300 pages and you uh, prepared your beautiful uh, the, the way and the good uh, design. And also uh, you can find inside uh, a lot of uh, projects, uh, including the, the, the Sinop uh, and Sinopale uh, project inside. And uh, this is also a good, um, uh, how can I say, information about the, part, uh, the participatory art practices, 
who the uh, the artists uh, what uh, can do and uh, the name is collaboration uh, it's also collaboration and collaboration and then your uh, old NGO names uh, was a uh, collaborat uh, mm -hmm. and uh, so and thank you uh, uh, to you uh, for this opportunity because uh, this is uh, this is in our uh, library in our archive <laughs> you Fine. yes you gave the chance uh, to to look inside to give uh, uh, to the university students and to the artists and to the designers Mm -hmm. and uh, thank you very much thank you thank you <laughs> for showing it around <laughs> yes <laughs> I, think, I think this is another aspect about sinopali or for me it's one of the most um, important uh, aspect where collaboration is i also work a lot with uh, with collaborative work and engagement etc and it's not always so easy it's not easy to convince people to be engaged in your projects just because you want them to come even uh, i remember having this conversation with you once in uh, i think otakring soho in otakring project like it's the project goes all the way there but it doesn't necessarily mean that when you go to people's neighborhoods they are going to come and join to the events etc so there is this hardship about making that engagement happen but in Sinop it is somehow the opposite it's like a huge audience is waiting to be engaged to be part of it in in many different ways so yeah. um it, it makes it I think so both enjoyable and and you feel like I'm glad I'm here and it's, it's so uh yeah. <laughs> that is true. Part of it. But it's mm. also the, I think this continuous work, it's so important that also Sinopala does that you involve the people and you, again, every year or mm. you involve them all the time. And then mm. you're getting, you're creating this open community who is interested mm -hmm. in new projects or yeah. in the next happening. And yeah, exactly. So the no information that they provide, the knowledge that informs the art pieces gets conserved and preserved in artistic forms of a different kind of archive in a way right so mm -hmm. all this information you get from them not necessarily reflected in the work or not necessarily maybe are speakable right now like some of the experiences we have maybe we cannot just so easily speak about them but they are somehow preserved within the artwork so it's a it's a very different form of archive that it is uh, getting accumulated there um, mm -hmm. So thank you very much for this wonder. I mean, reminding us all these projects and uh, showing us the thread between the works and your journey as well. Um, and of course, uh, I'd like to remind once again, the film uh, that you mentioned several times is, is on the same um, page where we have the link uh, to this uh, talk. So, because it doesn't only show the piece, but it is more about how the process developed and how, you know, the conversations um, uh, were um, built with the people. So I think um, all together, this talk, your uh, images that you shared with us and, and that film all together, I think creates a great um, information, the background information about the pieces that uh, you produced there. Thank you very much. Anything else? Thank you. Anybody wants to add anything? Thank you for thank you for everybody and thank you for joining us and Johanna and Johannes and uh, Livia and Ushin and the other uh, friends and the the Chidem interpreter. Uh, thank you for this evening uh, for these nice conversations and the on fifteenth uh, of June. Evening, we have also another uh, conversation uh, with Berglind here in Stotir. And you, uh, we are inviting you uh, once again, and we will meet there. Thank you very much. Have a nice have a day. Good you can follow uh, our events under the sinopale8.org uh, link. Uh, have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye bye.